for me, I think the biggest thing that football taught me was how to overcome adversity. At some point in your life, you're going to have some tough times. You have to have that next play mentality. That cohesiveness and that working together, that's really something special that you can't get in a lot of other areas. When you practice that and you live that in other phases of your life, it, it, it becomes second nature because all you know how to do is fight. It's not an easy game. If it were easy, everyone would do it. You start to appreciate the, the smaller contributions that people make. You don't just look at the big one because you knew it took six or seven other guys who are unsung. And, uh, you know, you, you can't take shortcuts and be successful. Doing what they do to make it possible for the guy getting the press clippings or whatever it might be. In this game, whether it's as a coach or a player. So, um, I would certainly say that, um, you know, you definitely got uh, a very quick lesson in how to overcome adversity playing football. Welcome to another edition of Talking Ball with the Czar. I'm Emory Hunt, the Czar of the Playbook, here on the campus of North Carolina Wesleyan, the Battling Bishops with head football coach Jeff Dolkowski. Coach, appreciate you taking time. No problem. Thank you for stopping. Your program is, is fairly new, and, you know, you guys have got, you've gotten here. team has gotten better each and every season. A lot of people think it's so easy just to step right in and turn around a program, but we both know that it's not. How have you been able to get it, get this thing turned around quickly and get it headed in the right direction. No, I, I hope it's headed in the right direction. Certainly, um, you need administration, you need help. Um, this place has been around for um, going on its 14th year, I believe. A mm -hmm. uh, lot of success in the short time prior to me getting here. Uh, three conference titles, uh, had it rolling pretty good, and, and, and then it went a little bit downhill. Um, you know, when I came in here, it was a two, three win program and and we started out that way when I was here and again a lot of it is consistency uh, as we talked about off camera is about the retention uh, that's the biggest player in the game of division three football is being able to get to have a senior class uh, when you have single digit seniors as you know from playing uh, you're playing a lot of young guys and there's gonna be a lot of mistakes and 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 that's the storm that we had to weather uh, we're Growing up, finally, um, you know, we'll probably have 18 to 20 seniors next year, uh, which is a welcome from eight to nine a year, my first couple years here, uh, and then staying consistent within the program. I mean, teaching the same things over and over again, um, you know, even outside the football, the football field, I believe you got to be great. Uh, and the, the walk and the character that you carry across campus is so vital to us winning a football game and you know you hear and I'm sure you hear it all the time from coaches but you know we, we talk constantly about the little things and if you take care of the little things the big things will take care of yourselves. Now you talk about that message how much of it you thought okay man maybe the message is getting stale but at what point did it start to click for these guys where you start to see more guys start to buy in and, and sustain themselves throughout the course of their career? Well, I think that the biggest thing here is we've, they've always had talent. I mean, there's guys here, I think the best running back I ever coached and I've been in NFL Europe and at the Division One level at the University of Cincinnati was a young man named Jay Alston who was here as my, when I got here. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you great stories about Jay and, and uh, how dynamic he was and, and you know, he would have never gotten to the point where he was an All-American as a senior uh, without realizing that I need more than just the talent that I have. I need to be able to back it up with character and hard work and um, you know, and he did. And I think a lot of guys saw that, um, meaning, you know, with Jay Austin, we're winning two games. I mean, this is probably, like I said, the best running back I've ever coached, mm -hmm. and they're winning two games. So the the realization of what we got to do in the off season, how we carry ourselves, if you want the fruits of, you know, to come to fruition in the fall, you got to be able to pay the price, and and a lot of that price is just, you know, the character, the effort, the you know, and again, it's it's the intangible. It doesn't take 
any ability. Mm. It just takes work. And uh, I think that that was the biggest thing is that, that our team has seen is that, you know, we're not preaching, you know, be great and little things to take care of, you know, big things to take care of themselves. If you take care of the little things, you know, they're starting to see it. And, um, and, and that doesn't fall on deaf ears, if you would. Um, hard work is something that I think our guys are finally realizing that's the, that's the avenue to greatness. You've been well-traveled as a coach. You coach at the FBS level, like you mentioned, Cincinnati, the FCS level, NEIA, D3 here currently, and also NFL Europe. A lot of people don't remember that. You were the offensive coordinator for the Cologne Centurions. Um, what was that experience like, and how did that experience coaching at, in, a, you know, in NFL Europe and as an offensive coordinator change your approach moving forward? Yeah, um, certainly I was fortunate. You know, David Duggan uh, was the head football coach at the Cologne Centurions when, when the phone call came and and uh, certainly as you mentioned an offensive coordinator and that was the first time I got the chance to put the big pants on and <laughs> run my show if you would and, and um, you know it, it was a great experience I mean great players obviously the guys sitting there you know notch below getting paid really paid um, you know so the experience was incredible I mean um, just to learn you know, from how to game plan to to my style, you know, mm -hmm. and and realizing, you know, the where do I want to be and how do I want to grow and and um, you know, and it was my first taste of doing my own thing and and certainly, um, you know, when the when the league folded, uh, I wasn't ready for it to fold. I mean, I, I was excited about staying in it and and um, continuing on the journey and on the path of. You know my career as a coordinator mm -hmm. um, and certainly when the league folded and hence so I ended up you know reevaluating where I was and got back down to this level I played at this level um, you know I've now been at this level for 10 years you know um, you know being a coordinator for one and, and nine years as a head football coach so um, you know, it, it was a great experience. I mean, certainly um, one that I'll value forever. Now, would you recommend coaches have, you know, of a, a variety of experiences? Because you know how you hear some coaches saying, I only want to coach this at right. this level. Right. Do you think it's important to get, let's say, a high school, college, pro experience as a, as a coach? Yeah, well, <laughs> I mean, I'm sure everybody would want to be a pro coach. Everybody would, you know, everybody's chasing those jobs and, you know, football scoop is readily up and, you know, the, the chase is on whenever the, after every season and, you know, and, and um, you know, everybody wants to be as big, big as they can be and the, you know, bright, bright lights, big city type mm -hmm. stuff. and. And, uh, you know, I had my run at it, you know, um, had a great experience with a lot of guys. There's still, you know, Jimbo Fisher's head coach at Florida State and Mike Tomlin and Rex Ryan and John Harbaugh. These guys I worked with and, you know, at the University of Cincinnati. Um, great mentor there and Rick Minner. Um, you know, X and O, you know, probably the best coach I've ever been around, um, you know. That's what I learned, you know, my background from, if you would, and and you know, as far as the X's and O's and and and, and that type of stuff. But do you recommend it? I mean, I, I think everybody would love to be a pro coach. Everybody would love to be it, you know, especially with the paydays that they're getting now. And mm -hmm. you know, I, I'm about coaching. I'm about the the kids and the and and making sure they're growing to become, you know, serviceable young men in society and. And, um, and along the way, we're winning some football games so that they can learn the greatest life lessons of football. And, um, and you're gonna get knocked down. It's, it's gonna be that man that gets you up. So, man, you're gonna be. You were a quarterback at Allegheny, the Gators, uh, out there in Pennsylvania. You were a quarterback that led your team to the national championship in 1990. Do you find yourself drawing back from your playing experience at the collegiate level, at the winning collegiate level, to preach to these guys today about what it takes to be a champion? Yeah, well, certainly, and fortunate again in, in that situation. Um, the, the biggest thing that I draw upon those years is certainly the experience. I mean, the memories are great uh, through the recruiting efforts. Uh, I, I talk about that a lot with the recruits, is the memories you're gonna make over these next four years. 
uh, are going to be immense. I mean, they're going to be a lifetime. Mm -hmm. um, whether you win the national title or not, I believe those things happen. But certainly the national championship was a special moment. Um, the one thing I draw with our current team is uh, the competition. You know, um, what it means to compete. And we do that, and again, that's kind of what I talk about on their daily walk is how they carry themselves. And they don't... Uh, totally under, understand or get it you know you, you win the games you know during the week uh, you show up on Saturday and and hope not to lose them you know uh, turn the ball over and, and things like that but that's I think you take care of those things during the week by t handling the little things and you know I always joke around with the recruits and say where do you learn to stay on side and they you know, well, watch the ball we watch the ball. I said no it's by getting up and going to class you know, it's a discipline. It's how you carry yourself on a daily, met, you know, daily movements, whether it's in a library or in a cafeteria. Yes, ma'am, thank yous, and all those things are the things we're trying to preach. Because once you get those little things taken care of, I promise you, staying on sides, we ain't got to worry about it. Mm -hmm. You know, now we can practice stunts and blitzes and, and all that stuff. And same thing with a run back. You ain't got to worry about holding on football. Is that guy going to hold on football? He's going to hold on football. Now we can work on the dynamics of cutting and, you know, different plays, if you would. But, um, you know, th that's the biggest thing is, you know, looking back at our experience or my experience of the national title is, you know, there was a lot of guys that, you know, the, my memories are made with. Um, they were great competitors. I mean, and that's, everybody says they're a competitor, but mm -hmm. I mean, there's guys on that team just like myself that, you know, whether we were playing cards or pool or uh, shooting basketball or, you know, playing badminton, you know, <laughs> they didn't want to lose. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's the, the ultimate. And I think once you get that, you know, a bunch of guys together like that, some special things can happen. Well, what would you say you love about the game the most? Our game? Uh, how how dynamic it is as far as the physicality that is and the mental toughness that you need. Uh, you know the physicality part. I, I'm a I'm a guy that loves to run the football. Uh, you know we'll throw it a little bit, but you know I think that the the physicality of the game is 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 you know whether it's blocking or tackling. You know those are the things that. Uh, you know set us apart and um, you know and, and as we talked about earlier the mental toughness of you got to be able to get up and you know if I'm a left tackle and this defensive end just blew my doors off and sacked the quarterback guess what I gotta go do it again and because uh, it probably was second and ten now it's third and fifteen and and you know everybody knows we're throwing the ball uh, the challenges are, are, are the best and, and that mental toughness to go compete another down is is, is great so. One of my favorite questions of these interviews, Coach, I always ask coaches, you know, what's their philosophy? Because I like picking the brains of guys I, I, I meet with and talk with. Uh, what would you say your coaching philosophy is? Well, I, I, I believe ultimately we win with enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. uh, everything we do, um, from lifting weights in the morning at 6 o'clock to morning runs to Anything we do throughout the day, and again, I hope it, 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 it reaches across the lines of from the field to the classroom and to their student life, is that they attack everything with a smile on their face and try, and that's when you're gonna give your best. Uh, you know, we extend off of that a, a little bit, and you know, we kind of have two program roles. Uh, you know, I, I believe in always telling the truth. Um, I want my guys to be able to come in here, even if they did the, the worst of worst things, don't try to make it up and, and make something up and make it worse if you would mm -hmm. um, and, and then the distractions and we call them the stupids you know little old said do right um, you know do right sometimes runs off of these guys like water so you know I tell them to avoid the stupids you know those are distractions your daily walk uh, you know missing class and and, and and things like that that you know and certainly there's the the, the big ones of you know the drugs in in, in sports today and and the other extracurriculars you always see, um, you gotta avoid those. And you know, every kid's gonna sit there and say, boy, that's dumb. 
but for some reason, dumbs keep happening. Keep happening. You know, and and that's the crazy. So the, the, that that's the the gist of what we talk about on a consistent basis. And and uh, I email or excuse me, huddle the message to guys every day. Um, you know, I finish it with two words: be great. And that's all I want you to do is everything you do uh, going across campus. You know, be great at it. And if you do that over the next four years or the four years you're here. Uh, the, the, your future is could be as bright as you want it to be, and you make you, you make you, and uh, and that's the ultimate. I mean, when we go out through the gates to go to practice, uh, you know, certainly we're attacking that practice with enthusiasm. But we make us, you know. So each individual, you make you, you make you as the bishops, and uh, how, how good of a football team we're going to be, it's up to the guy in the mirror. And you look at, you know, from outstanding collegiate player, outstanding coach, coordinator, head coach. Out of all those travels and experiences, what would you say football taught you? Again, probably determination or resilience. Um, what a, you know, again, great game. Um, you know, the uh, and what a crazy career I've had. I mean, I've been out of work. Uh, you know, I could have easily went and did something totally different for the rest of my life um, you know it, it's a passion it's where my love is and, and um, my love with not only my the game but with the guys um, you know it, it takes special character to be able to you know work all season on lifting and you know the things the grind that you got to go through for 10 days or, or 12 days or whatever it may be in the fall uh, that that's the crazy beauty of football where you know basketball volleyball baseball you know you play a couple times a week and turn the page and you're right back at it and mm -hmm. you know you're, you're grinding on a weekly basis to try to prepare for one day uh, and obviously if you're grinding throughout the whole year you're preparing for what 12 13 days in the fall I mean that's crazy I mean 365 for for 12 you know and uh, if, when you put it in reality right. and that's what makes it so special uh, makes those days so special and certainly uh, you know football is as big as it's been as far as that side of it you know the money of the game and the and the attendance of the game and the TVs of the game you know mm -hmm. it, 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 it's it's as popular as it's ever been Coach, obviously we remember back in the day when you used to get a letter in the mail, it was a big thing now. Or you had maybe four or five schools on television. Now everyone's on television. You can watch games online. So you're more connected as a student athlete, so you have a lot of choices. If I was doing it again, or you know, to any student athlete out there that's, that's thinking about their college choices and wanting to play football, why would a student athlete choose NC Wesleyan? Certainly, the the biggest part of it, if you if you end up being a Division three football player, uh, and this is the reality that I kind of present to the guys when they when they're here on a recruiting day, uh, is what you're going to get here is real. Uh, I've been there at the the bigger levels, if you would, and and this isn't a this isn't a place where I want to sell. Uh, when I'm at the scholarship school I got something I can give you I can line the girls up and put your name in lights and mm -hmm. you know high five you dap you up and make you feel real good about yourself uh, it, which I want to be able to do while you're here on campus but the biggest thing is I don't want to sell you on this place I want you to see what we are and who we, what we're about and understand that our program is about substance and, and not about a sizzle not about you know leading you astray down this path that everybody's going to show up at camp and put their name right across their helmet you know so come august i don't want you to feel like you've been fooled uh, i want you to understand that we're going to be here for you academically number one um our support structure as far as our coaches reaching across the you know to to help bring you along um we have a program in place and a lot of schools do that um go beyond study table um and we talked about there's many hats we got to wear as far as coaches and and that's one of the biggest hats that we wear is that care hat and that care hat is certainly a number one better be about their academics and how they per perform it in the classroom um, you know then certainly it extends to you know the things that 
maybe bringing the guy down emotionally or you know eating or family or whatever it might be that you know I want our coaches to genuinely care about our players and, and that ain't something that, that goes lightly or just that I say I mean we have meetings with our players individually twice a week in the fall um, you know might be three minutes maybe ten minutes maybe an hour uh, you never know what you're gonna get when that young man comes in and sits down and starts talking to you but the first thing we address is academics and um, you know where do you stand how you doing and, and those types of things and and as I mentioned throughout the whole day today is that you know I want to be able to win off the field um, and if you're winning off the field it makes your game a heck of a lot easier practices a lot easier you'll win on the field mm -hmm. and um, you know that's the that's the part that I'm constantly preaching even with my coaches uh, is that you know don't get lost in the X's and O's and sit there and start scheming on a board you better have guys that can do what you're asking them to do um, and you know through recruiting and you know we mentioned retention at this level is a difficult task uh, you know we, we got to keep them engaged and um, and that's not by hey look what I can the great scheme I put up there. And those schemes don't matter. You know, if, if we can't line up and block and tackle, I mean, the schemes don't matter. And, and we won't be able to block and tackle if we're missing class or, you know, flunking out or, or our retention is terrible because nobody will come and lift or, you know. So the whole dynamic behind our program is based on, you know, everything's in place for the player, for you. Uh, not for me. I mean, lifting makes you bigger, faster, stronger, so you, you can be a better football player. Uh, obviously, I'll reap the benefit of you of your success. Mm -hmm. um, but same thing in the classroom. I mean, we have a program in place that's going to make uh, every player, you know, not only accountable, but it's going to help them hit their marks in the classroom. Certainly, we reap the benefit of everybody hitting their marks because then. The GPA, team GPA is great, but that's not why I do it. I do it for each individual case. You know, not everybody running 4-4. Four, four. You know, not everybody's going to be a 4.0, but I'm looking for everybody to hit their mark and be the best that they can be. Um, and if that's what you're looking for, this is a great place because, you know, we've got a great staff. Um, I'm fortunate that, you know, we have six full-time staff members, four interns, and we have 10 guys here on a daily basis, you know, to monitor the kids, uh, making sure they're doing the things that they need to be doing and um, a number one is going to be in the classroom and and then the big thing is it's all about substance. Everything you see here is going to be real. There's not going to be any, you know, we're going to have fun, don't get me wrong, but it's going to be about the moment and understanding that this moment is so precious, this four year period of time, of, it's going to affect the rest of your life. It's going to ultimately affect your pocketbook when you're 40, 50 years old. and. Uh, and everybody's going to have regrets. We we have regrets from that time, but you know if we can eliminate the big regret, you know that, that these guys can springboard across the stage and get a degree, and uh, and life begins. Uh, that's the most rewarding. You know, I can promise you, if I got a lot of those guys, we'll win a lot of championships. Well, I, I definitely appreciate you taking time. I, I looked around campus. You could tell this is a campus on upswing. Football program since you got here has definitely had that resurgence, and we wish you the best luck moving forward. Your battle and bishops are going in the right direction, and uh, you know hopefully we can continue yeah. to see these guys continue to trek uh, forward in the right way. And I know with you at the helm, they definitely will do so. So I appreciate you. Coach. Appreciate you. Thank stopping. you.